Hello. It's Christmas Eve. A very special day. When we're all getting really excited about tomorrow. Christmas Day. Jesus' birthday. A very, very special day. Well, on this Christmas Eve afternoon, we were hoping that we'd be able to hold our Christingle service here in the church. But the bad news is that, sadly, that wasn't possible. However, the good news is that we can hold it on YouTube. So thank you very much for joining us. Every morning this last month, I've been opening one of the windows on my advent calendar. Here it is. And today, Christmas Eve, the last day, I've opened the last window. And in that window were some words from the Bible. God loved the world so much that he sent Jesus. Jesus, in his life, showed people how much God loved them. He showed them that by befriending them, by helping them, by caring for them, and telling us stories to help us to understand more about just how much God loves each one of us. In other parts of the Bible, Jesus is described as being light coming into the world, chasing away the darkness. And at the Christingle service, we remember that especially with the candle that's on top of the orange that represents the world. Jesus is light to the whole world, showing everyone how much God loves them. We're going to remind ourselves of the Christmas story, of the way in which Jesus came into the world to show us God's love and to be light for us all. That story, however, doesn't begin at Bethlehem where Jesus was born all those years ago. It begins in another town in Israel, a little place called Nazareth, because that's where Mary and Joseph lived. Let's put Mary and Joseph into our nativity scene. Mary had a visit from an angel who announced to her some good news. Good news, said the angel to Mary. God is sending someone special into the world. His name will be called Jesus. And God wants you to be his mother. It was good news for Mary. On the other hand, at the same time, Joseph was having some bad news. The Roman emperor wanted everyone to go to their hometown to be counted. And for Joseph, that meant going, along with Mary, all the way to Bethlehem. A long, tiring, dusty kind of journey. Bad news, sighed Joseph to Mary. The rulers of our country want to count us. That means a long journey all the way from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Well, they set out on their journey. But when they arrived in Bethlehem, they discovered that it was heaving with people. Lots of people had had to go there to be counted because Bethlehem was the place where they were born. There wasn't a room to be had for the night. Joseph looked at all the inns and they were all full. And when he got to the last one, the innkeeper said, bad news. 
There's not a room to be had in Bethlehem. The only good news is, I do have a stable, and you're very welcome to spend the night there. So Mary and Joseph went into the stable to spend the night. And whilst they were there, Mary's son was born. Good news, said Joseph, handing the baby to Mary. It's a boy, just as God promised. And we will call him Jesus, just as we were asked. Let's place Jesus in the manger. Now, good news is always something to share. And when Jesus was born, that good news was shared by a whole company of angels who appeared to some shepherds who were on the hills looking after their sheep. Good news, the angel said. God has sent someone special into the world. If you hurry to Bethlehem, you'll be able to see him for yourselves. And the angels filled the sky with songs of joy. Glory to God in the highest, they sang. So the shepherds, having heard that good news, went down to Bethlehem to see the child that the angels had told them all about. So let's place the angels in our nativity scene. Here's one shepherd. And here's a little shepherd boy. And here's one of the sheep. But the good news of Jesus' birth was told not just to shepherds, but also to some kings who lived far away. They had read in their books about a star that would rise and which, if they followed it, would lead them to the place where the new king had been born a very special king. Those kings had strange names. Balthazar, Melchior and Caspar are how we know them. Good news, said King Balthazar to King Melchior. There's a bright new star shining in the sky. It's time to pack our saddlebags and to follow it. Let's see where it leads. And so those kings started on their journey from the far east. Let's put them in our stable. One king, Casper. Another king, Melchior. And another king, Balthazar. And let's not forget the camel on which they travelled. The Christmas story is a very special story because it tells us that God loved the world so much that he sent Jesus to be with us. To show us that love. We make our Christingles at this time of the year as a way of reminding ourselves of the Christmas story. And when we light the candle on the top of the Christingle, we're sharing the good news with one another that Jesus is still the light of the world, that he is still the one who shows us how much God loves each one of us. At Christmas time, we say thank you to God 
for Jesus' birthday. And as we share our cards and our presents and enjoy some nice special food, we remember that birthday and how in sending Jesus, God showed the world long ago and still today how much he loves each one of us. Now Gemma is going to show us a Christingle and explain to us what it means. Have a very happy Christmas. Happy Christmas Eve. I hope you're all well. I'm going to go through Chris Dingles. We're going to make one together and I'm going to tell you all about symbolism. So first off, you're going to need a few items. Now, you can always get creative if you haven't got the exact things around the house, but this <coughs> excuse me, is what we're going to use. First thing we have is an orange. Now, I have some red ribbon. Instead of red ribbon, you can use some red paper or red electrical tape. We have four cocktail sticks. If you don't have cocktail sticks, you can maybe pop out into the garden, see if there's any small twigs. We have four raisins or sultanas. I think these are actually sultanas. I've got four of those. And then we have four little sweeties, little marshmallows I've got. I have a candle. If you don't have a candle like this, I'm sure you've got one of these. Now it's Jesus' birthday, so a birthday candle is absolutely fine to use. So these are the main elements. As you can see, on this side, I've got some things that might mean you need a responsible adult to help. I think I just about qualify, so I should be okay. I've got a potato peeler. You could use an apple corer instead if you have one of those. I have a sharp knife, it doesn't necessarily need to be this sharp knife, a butter knife would probably do the trick. I have some scissors because I'm using, um, if you're using um, ribbon and sellotape you might need that. And then I have a source of light. So we're going to move these bits out of the way and we're going to get started. Now, just a little bit of background about Chris Dingles. Chris Dingles are believed to have um, started in Germany in 1947. At the time, a minister gave children a candle wrapped with red ribbon. Now, since that happened, it's travelled all around the world and other elements have been added to the Chris Dingle. And in 1968, that's when it arrived in the UK. And it's taken off ever since. So we're going to build the Chris Dingle and then I'm going to tell you about what all of these elements mean. I'm going to start off with the orange. Well, this orange is quite sturdy but what I do is take the knife and just chop the little bit of the bottom off like that. And that gives you a bit of a sturdier base. See it's not going to roll anywhere now. So there we have it. Now I'm going to choose to use the red tape. So I'm going to move the ribbon out of the way. So I can find the end of the red tape. Here it is. Now, there we go. Get a nice length. I'm just going to kind of measure it around roughly. There we go. I think that's going to be long enough. Use the scissors to cut carefully. Ooh, bit blunt. Now, if you are using ribbon, like this piece here, wrap it round and you can either use sellotape or just secure with maybe a little sewing pin. You can do that instead. But as I said, I'm going to use the electrical tape this time. I'm just going to put it around the centre all the way around the centre of the orange. There we go, so you've got a nice strip going all the way around. Okay, so if you're using a birthday candle, just pop it in the top. But we're going to use one of these candles. So I'm going to take this out, I'm going to hold the candle here, 
And this is where I'm using my potato peeler. Okay, I'm just going to carefully move around the candle just to give a bit of sizing, okay? And then very carefully I'm going to go around my mark with the potato peeler again. And this should just pop out. Ta da! Okay. And let's check that the candle fits. Ah, oh, yes. There we go. Fantastic. So here we go. We've got the orange, the red ribbon, the candle. Move over here. I'm going to take the four cocktail sticks. Okay. I'm going to put the I believe we just realised that these are sultanas. I'm going to put the fruits on the sticks. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to talk about why four in a moment. I'm going to use the sweeties and I'm just going to pop them on the end. And I'm going to just put them so that they cover the tip of that cocktail stick. So they're not super sharp. And then what we're going to do, we're going to one. Two, three, and last one, four. Here we go. So there we go, this is our Chris Dingle, all made up. Now some people put more than one sweetie on the end, more fruit, not a problem. Fill your boots, get happy. It's Christmas, enjoy yourself. So, we're going to talk about the symbolism now. So the first thing that we did was we had the orange. Now the orange represents the world. Can you see? It's like a bit of a globe, isn't it? It's like the world, the earth. So the orange represents the earth. And the red ribbon that goes all the way around the earth, yeah, represents God's love wrapped around the world. And it also symbolises... Jesus' blood, which is why it's red, and which shows Jesus' love for us. The next thing we did was the four sticks. And the four sticks represent the four directions. So we have north, south, east, and west. They also represent the four seasons. Spring, summer, autumn, and winter. The next thing we added were the fruits and the sweets. So you could be adding grapes or anything like that. So the fruits and the sweets. And these represent the fruits of the earth and the gifts we receive from God. Now the last thing we are going to talk about is this here, the candle. And it shows the love of God in the darkness. So the light in the darkness. It shows Jesus being light of the world. And when we light it, we show that Jesus is still light of our world. And we know that how much God loves us. So once you've made your Christingle, we're going to light it. There we go. Okay. The word Christingle translates as Christ's light and this this here is Christ's light and it shows us the love it is the light in the darkness so make your Christingle and say thank you to God for Jesus and celebrate his birth so from everyone at Goring Methodist Church we wish you a very Merry Christmas we're very sad that we're not with you today but hopefully 2022 will allow us to be all together again doing things that we like to do. So we look forward to seeing you soon. Merry Christmas. Bye.